Make sure to leave milk and cookies out for the Calgary Flames tonight. Hockey returns tomorrow. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me and being a part of the first official week of uh, NHL regular season hockey. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a supply of five antibiotics, and get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. So training camp rosters were released. We're going to talk all about that, who to watch, what to watch, but make sure that you are subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you're getting your podcasts, and of course on YouTube because we are back five days a week, back to daily shows. I'm excited. I think this is going to be so much fun, and Hopefully the Flames will give us more than they gave us last year. So, like I mentioned, rosters have been released, and we're going to go over that in a second. But I wanted to just kind of point something out. The Flames haven't signed anyone to a PTO, and that that's a good thing, okay? Because remember last year when these roster spots were kind of taken up by players that weren't super effective on the fourth line or really wherever Sutter decided to put them. Well, now there's really ample op- ample opportunity for homegrown kids to make the roster. And that is Huska's mission. That's what that's what he wanted. He said that when he came in to the uh press conference and his role as a general manager, what he wanted to do is get these kids some time. And I'm going to share my screen really quick here. uh, If you're watching on YouTube, that way we can go over these rosters on team Vernon. You have, um, these are mainly, I would say, NHL-level guys. It's a good mix in all three groups, but you have Huberto, Dryden Hunt, Igor Shesterkin, Kevin Rooney, Jacob Pelletier, Elias Lindholm, and Matthew Coronado. I think uh, right off the bat there, you're going to see uh, Sharon Govich, Huberto, and Lindholm on the same line. You might see Coronado and Pelletier uh, with Rooney because he's an older player. I shouldn't say older, but he's a more experienced um, center. And I believe that Pelletier played with him last year as well, uh, a little bit in uh, the AHL. You have uh, Walker Dewar, Connor Zari, Sam Honzik, which uh, first round draft pick from this year, Cole Schwint, Parker Bell, Rasmus Anderson, Nikita Zadorov, Carter Pullman, Mackenzie Weger, Noah Hannafin, Nick DeSimone, um, and then you have Jared Gorley and Ilya Solovoy. Um, and for your goaltenders, you have Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar. Again, I think that this is a good group of players here. Obviously, you know, you're going to probably see Mackenzie Weger and Rasmus Anderson, maybe Noah Hannafin and Zadorov paired together. I think that they're going to get creative. And in on Team Aginla, you have uh, Backland, Coleman, Dubé, Kadri, Adam Klapka, Mangiapani, Razichka, Brett Sutter, and a few other names. Um, one of the standout names that I had noticed other people talking about was William uh, Stromgren. He's getting a shot with some, you know, a mainly NHL group. So he's going to have the tools around him. So maybe we will see uh, the, what he's got to work with here and what he's going to give us. And for your defense, you have Chris Tanev, Dennis Gilbert, Oliver Shillington, and some more younger guys, and Dustin Wolf and Oscar Dansk in net. Biggest thing right here. Biggest thing. Oliver Shillington, 
and Chris Tanev. These two were so dynamic last year. They it was or two years ago rather. It was crucial for them and really the team's success. So I'm very excited to see what happens here. I'm excited to see, you know, not necessarily picking up where they left off, but if we can get uh, visions of that, right, and glimpses and kind of get back to a level of that. And then your third group um, is basically just all prospects. So obviously that's going to be an exciting thing to watch. I think that it's just, it's fun. Hockey is back. The flames are back. There's, you have every reason to look forward to this team. The vibes have changed. Uh, It looks pretty promising in terms of young guys making the roster. And yeah, you aren't under the management of a horrible coach anymore. I think that that should really be enough. I'm I'm really excited to see. I wouldn't even say excited. I'm looking forward to interested in seeing how the dynamic of Huberdo, Lindholm, and Sharon Govich uh, work together. I'm very, again, last year I was super doubtful about Toffoli being on that top right right wing, and I was wrong. I was proven very wrong. So, I mean, maybe I'll be proven proven wrong again this year because anything, clearly anything is possible. I'm really, really glad to see Uyghur and Anderson together. I think both of them together, as we've seen, were super uh, impactful and effective. I, I really like the defensive group that the Flames have. You know, Hannafin, Zadorov, Uyghur, Anderson... Chillington and Tanev and not Michael Stone almost set him out of heaven. <laughs> but, you know, you have the opportunity to lean on those guys, but you also have some guys like Dennis Gilbert in the AHL that you can lean on. And that's the fun of all of this. You don't know who might be playing in the lineup come January because, you know, someone's out with a stomach bug. So they're finally getting a chance to crack the roster. But it's always nice to see these kids get like watch their hard work pay off and you can't you can't be too analytical okay we're going to talk about that next but before we do that we are going to take a quick break so um stick with me here as we ride through uh, this quick ad read Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five antibiotics for you and gives you peace of mind. You have them on hand, right? And access to medication. Jace Medical makes sure that you have medication in hand. It's simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy, medication delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Save more than $360 by getting these antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That is J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked On Flames, and we are finally... <laughs> It was five and a half months without Flames hockey. Yesterday, so Tuesday, they released the media day footage of, you know, just them doing like their gifts, their selly gifts, random things that they'll need throughout the season. And they put a video together. And I swear I hadn't felt a rush of happiness like that, sports related happiness in a very long time. So it's good. It's so good to be back. And make sure you're subscribed because we're back for you five days a week. We we do have to, again, reel it back in because we are just at the starting line. This is a sprint. Or no, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And we have a long season ahead of us. Heading into training camp, there are two groups of players here, right? You have your NHLers using this as a warm-up. Guys that are, you know, bound to make the roster, like a Jonathan Huberto or Rasmus Anderson, those kinds of guys. So, and then you have the young kids who are looking to stand out. They are looking 
for every opportunity that, and there, if an opportunity doesn't present itself, they're going to make an opportunity for themselves. No one here in either group is going to be out there on X Games mode. That would be silly. You know, there's no reason to risk serious injury uh, in training camp. Yes, accidents happen. We've seen it before. I believe players just hurt their ankles, hurt their legs, their wrists, whatever. Uh, so this really isn't the time to do do the most. <laughs> We're just trying to loosen up and get ready for these preseason games. And then in just a few weeks, we'll have opening night. This is a perfect time for younger players or to showcase what this team was missing last season. Last season, this team looked slow. Not only did they look slow, they were slow. Pretty much every team was running laps, circling them, because they did not have to work as hard as the Flames. <laughs> the Flames were an older team. They were not in it. They just, the speed wasn't there. And hopefully, you know, over this summer, players worked on conditioning and we get to see a little bit more speed to this lineup. Players um, like Sam uh, Hanzik, Coronado, Pelletier, uh, and the younger guys, are, this is a perfect time for them to show off how that skill set could be of value to the lineup. Now, Hanzik is probably, uh, you know, he's going back to the WHL for a little bit here uh, just because he's not anywhere. He is not NHL or really AHL ready at this point, but it's time for a lot of these guys to, I would, listen, if Matthew Phillips was still here, he would be a shoe in on this roster as well. And it would be so exciting to watch him, but we don't get to have that. Washington fans get to have that. There's no, there's a fine line, right? Obviously, it's okay to criticize players, but we, we need to <laughs> remember that this is training camp. This isn't the Stanley Cup. This is very much a warm-up. This is your um, stretching in the morning for, like, for everyday people. You know, get loose, let loose. And it, it's not that deep, you know. The players that go out there are and, and do, uh, like, the most ridiculous stuff. Like, that's just, you aren't going to see that. And I think Flames players know, especially the younger guys, that, there's ways to make differences without being like a little pest in everyone's face. You know, you um, you can show off your speed. You can show off your shooting. You can show off your goaltending skills, your defensive skills. You know, what do you bring to this lineup and how can you stand out? But at the same time, we don't have to overanalyze everything. There's no reason to overanalyze how this one player is moving a little slow compared to what they looked like um, in the middle of the season last year. Of course, they're going to look better in the middle of the season. It's not the start of the season <laughs> when things are getting going. And it's all about finding a rhythm. And we'll, we'll get there. I think everyone, I mean, Nick said it himself, everyone stinks a little bit. Everyone looks a little bad in training camp. Because again, you're finding that chemistry, you are finding your own game again. It, you're not playing in that local summer league that you just played in for three months. So mistakes and sloppiness are bound to happen. You can't, I mean, I, oh my gosh, I remember a preseason game last year where the Flames went 0 for 6 on the power play against the Canucks. And you would have thought the Flames had lost game seven. I I don't, it's, the world is not ending. The sky isn't falling. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's, I promise, you know, you can absolutely uh, analyze players, right? Obviously, uh, put together a little scouting report and, you know, take note of what you like and what you you don't like because maybe the thing you don't like is something that a player irons out. 
just let things happen. <laughs> you aren't going to see midseason execution. Embrace the good. Embrace the excitement, the anticipation, the unknown. Be excited because the Flames, the Flames are back, right? We, at the end of the day, we are all Flames fans. Or if you're listening just to listen, hi. Um, we're all hockey fans and we want this team to succeed. The most successful pieces are going to come out of training camp. Those successful pieces may shift in the season. So don't get all bent out of shape because one of these players starts the season with the Wranglers. It happens. Maybe they just need a few more months and then, you know, some shifting will happen. A player gets traded. There's a spot. So opportunity, there are plenty of opportunities and just don't write anything off yet. (laughs) It's still very early. Coming up next, we are going to talk about uh, who to watch as we wrap up today's episode, the final episode before the Calgary Flames hit the ice again. And I want to take a quick break here to talk to you about FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. You can get instant payouts, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over, under, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel the official partner of the NFL. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me today as we wrap up the final day, training camp eve. Leave out the milk and cookies in your hockey bags for the flames. It's it's time. A lot of we've all been looking forward to this. It was it was a long summer. Not a lot got done. Potentially things did get done. Maybe players made up their minds. We don't know. And that's Uh, another not so fun part of this, right? You just, you gotta wait. It's the waiting game. I wanted to talk about the three players that three people that you should be watching. Probably saying just this is training camp. Why am I just, why am I not watching players? Why am I watching people? You'll see. Jacob Pelletier. I am so, so excited to see what he brings, not only to this camp, but wherever he is playing hockey this season. He brings the speed. He brings the good vibes. He brings the offense. What more could you possibly want? And last season to me was an appetizer. You didn't get the full, not even an appetizer. It was like a flight, a flight of beer, a flight of Pelletier. You don't get, you didn't get a sampler that there we go. <laughs> Another comparison. But you you got small tastes of it. You weren't getting the full Jacob Pelletier experience because he was not on a line consistently with the, the caliber, kind of the level of caliber players he needs to be playing with. And, you know, I would say a solid middle six player and probably second line though. Like that's... That's really where I see Jacob Pelletier. I think that it's going to be really great to watch how him and Huberto work together. I I love their dynamic. I think that the mentorship going on there, it's great. And I know that they have that Quebec connection as well. The French connection is alive and well. And I can't wait to just see what they do this season. I'm, I'm excited for that. And Of course, along with Pelletier, you have Matt Coronado. Matt Coronado had a great rookies uh, tournament as well. He was just scoring left and right. Looks like he is adjusting well to putting on muscle. And again, small sample size of what we saw. So hopefully that's sustainable. I would like to believe that it is. And you're you're not going to see these him or Pelletier come out of the gate scoring 30 goals this season and, you know, 
putting on a clinic every night. It, it, you just, you get to watch these guys grow into players that will be full-time NHL uh, starters. There we go. And I remember watching that with Manji Apani. Manji Apani had just, he was in the middle of his first full season in the NHL when I started covering this team. Watching him blossom has been so rewarding because you've, you get to see the progress and it's not like it's happening right in front of you. And you're not just uh, having to recall on other players or other people's coverage or videos. Like you can really pick up on what's in front of you. I think that that's really great. Speaking of Manji Apani, I'm very excited to watch him this season as well, or this camp and this season. But he is coming off of shoulder surgery that in his shoulder was dinged up pretty much all last season. He didn't, letting injuries linger does more harm than good. And we saw that. But it sounds like he's fully healthy and ready to go. Um, I'm more than excited to see what he does this camp. How he, how does he look? How does he fit out there? Um, it kind of looks like he bulked up a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Super helpful, of course. And the last person that I'm very excited or uh, interested in watching is Ryan Husky. Why are you excited for a coach, Jess? Um, this is also a transition period for Ryan Huska. He obviously started as, or was, he's transitioning from the assistant coach to the head coach. And he does not have an easy job. He doesn't. And I, I really am interested in seeing how th- things shift. Uh, you know, what, what is he doing out there on the ice that was missing last year? What, what is he doing to bond with these players? I'm sure he's not taking their phones and scrolling through them and then telling, uh, handing their phones back and making players leave. <laughs> um, if I'm sure if that was happening or something of that caliber was happening, uh, players would have come forward by now. But I want to know how he's getting to know this group and how they're getting to know him on, you know, more of a head coach level because As an assistant coach, you know, you have a different role. You're still like an authority figure, a leader. But as the head coach, you're calling the shots. So if you want to bench uh, Dubé because he had a bad shift, there you go. Go double shift someone else or something, you know. I just want to see the difference in vibes. Again, this is a fully... (laughs) vibe driven podcast until we start seeing some actual results from the flames and all you can go on is you know certain projections what we've seen so far or what we will see in training camp and what might transition into the NHL and carry over into the NHL or into the regular season so there's a lot ahead of us. And I have you covered here on Locked on Flames because we are your daily Calgary Flames podcast here on the Locked on Podcast Network. You can get the show wherever you listen to your podcasts and of course on YouTube as well. And I hope that you stick around, subscribe and recommend us to a friend. And again, stay safe, stay hydrated, leave out your milk and cookies, and I will see you all tomorrow.